Well, when you go to your blog, when you look at your Twitter um, feed, one of the pictures that always comes up in your conversations is that image of the Silas yeah. twins, let's call it, yeah. of the white master and his slave going to the war in the uniform. Um, how did that start the conversation for you, and what was the big thing you wanted to communicate using that image? Well, you can certainly, first, you can certainly find it on hundreds of websites. So it's one of the most visible, uh, iconic images of the Civil War. And it's obviously the one that is most easily misinterpreted. Uh, you know, most of the you know, photographs that we have of uh, you know, what I call in the book camp slaves, body servants, and master from the war, uh, usually the, the Confederate officer, the master is seated. Um, the enslaved individual is sort of standing you know, next to him. This one, of course, they're both seated, uh, they're both in uniform, and they're both brandishing what appears to be an arsenal of weapons, right? And so for anyone who is already sort of inclined to believe uh, that black men did fight as Confederate soldiers, uh, for most people, this is all the evidence they need. This is sufficient evidence. And, and so the image itself is really the perfect um, uh, primary source to begin to sort of um, you know, focus on and steer people, you know, focus them, I guess you, you could say, between history and memory, how we choose to remember um, or misinterpret a, a primary source and the actual history behind it. Uh, you know, these are, th this is an image of master and slave. Uh, Silas uh, was enslaved to the Chandler family from birth, um, born in Virginia, actually moved with the family to Mississippi at an early age. And when Andrew enlisted in the 44th Mississippi Infantry in the spring of 1861, summer perhaps, um, he took Silas with him, as a lot of you know officers and enlisted men from the slaveholding class did. And Silas would have you know functioned as his personal body servant, a personal slave, who existed completely outside of the Confederate military hierarchy. Uh, this is an example of of slavery being plucked from the plantation to the military. And I was very, I was interested in trying to understand, among other things, just what happens to that relationship when you take it from something that's familiar, something that has already been defined between master and slave, and place it in a situation where you know, neither party is familiar with. And, and how is that relationship going to um, stretch and contract as a result sure. of the uncertainty of war? So that image really, I, I try to, use that image at different points in the book as almost a common thread to help mm -hmm. you know readers you know maintain their focus right. over the course of the, of the book and it was fairly prominent all over your kind of lead up to the writing of the book i remember yeah. some of the like website when you kind of outline the book and yeah, try it, to kind of promote start the early promotion of your writing it, it's all, always been there and early on in the research um, the great-granddaughter of Silas uh, mm -hmm. contacted me, and this is a woman who had for years been trying to sort of counter the myth of the black Confederate soldier as applied to her ancestors. Right. She, at one point, um, had to go to his gravesite in West Point, Mississippi, and remove a Confederate cross of honor. Um, and, you know, you can imagine her frustration. I mean, she didn't really have, in terms of opportunities to really, you know, challenge this, there were pretty few. and meeting her and, and she ended up sharing all of her research that she had done in local and state archives. Uh, it was extremely helpful and we ended up co-writing, we co-authored an article for Civil War Times in 2012, but I gotta be honest, when, you know, those moments when I, I had put it aside, right. I had her in the back of my mind and, and so uh, being able to actually send her a copy a couple of days ago uh, was just a real joy, you know? Yeah.